Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are pleased to be here in warmer climes and pleased to receive such a warm welcome from the Ashray Hellenic chapter. Um, we are going to be presenting our paper today on UK naval ships HVAC, maintenance of legacy systems. My name is Robin Stewart and my colleague is Eunice Abbas. As Nick said, we are design engineers from Devonport Royal Dockyard in Plymouth. During this presentation, we'll give you an overview of the HVAC design on naval ships prior to defining opportunities for improvements in operation and maintenance. An important driver for the upgrades to these ships is to meet standards and legislative fresh air requirements for the health and safety of the crew. With changing operational ambient conditions and modifications to equipment and personnel distribution, there is a need for these upgrades. Two issues will be covered in this paper. Firstly is the fresh air improvements and secondly is the upgrade to the air conditioning on UK naval ships where we'll look through three options. The scope as explained is to cover naval vessels. The agenda for the meeting will be to give you an overview of the HVAC on typical naval vessels before going into part one which I'll present on the fresh air upgrade giving you an overview and assessment against regulatory requirements and then a summary and part two will be presented by Eunice Abbas covering the air conditioning upgrade where I'll give you an overview and walk through three options that we're considering to improve the capacity of this system. We'll then have a Q&A session at the end. The cutaway photo here is of HMS Bulwark. She was commissioned in 2004 and is currently operating in the Mediterranean, working closely with the Italian Navy, forming a search and rescue capability. This is a 17,000 ton amphibious ship and is the Royal Naval flagship as it stands. This will form the example in the presentation, but it is worth bearing in mind that the systems we'll be discussing are broadly generic across the fleet. The full complement of 1,052 personnel is mainly located on the two deck and three deck forward of the well dock area. This is where the ventilation system is supplied. And it's supplied within autonomous fire zones separated by the bulkheads that forms an autonomous zone and that's where um, and that's where the dedicated ventilation, ventilation system is supplied. These ships were built for de defence standards of 31 degrees and minus 10 degrees centigrade in tropical and arctic winter conditions and we'll be considering in more detail the chilled water and ventilation systems. The 2.8 megawatt chilled water system in normal operations operates two main chilled water plants and several auxiliary units, each supplying a continuous flow of chilled water at six and a half degrees centigrade. The ventilation is a semi-recirculatory system that recirculates around 80% of the air with 20% air being supplied through the air filtration units and air handler units, the AFU and AHUs. So to part one of the presentation is the fresh air assessment and upgrade. Firstly, I'll walk you through the safety requirements that are applicable to these Navy, sh Navy ships. We've assessed the, the flow rates of the ship against these best practice. And the UK Workplace Health and Safety Welfare Regs, regulations of 1992, stipulate the 5.8 litres per second per person within the ships. Now, the naval standards recommend the distribution of air within the whole ship, and this is the whole ship, is a recommended average of the 13 litres per second per person. A ship's ventilation system is the mechanical lungs for the crew. Two issues can occur with lung problems. Firstly is hyoxemia. This mainly affects the brain, 
And the second problem is retention of carbon dioxide in high concentrations, hypercarbia. This mainly affects the neural system and the heart. The symptoms of hyoxemia and hypercarbia are similar, not too dissimilar to being a bit drunk. And they include loss of judgment, loss of coordination, headaches, breathing discomforts, nausea, confusion, and lethargy, and much worse in, concent in worse concentrations of either oxygen or carbon dioxide. And this is why the legislation stipulates these percentages are not breached. The constraints we've had when um, these ships have been measured to date have included, well, include when measuring the circulation on the vents, readings are taken with an anemometer at the ventilation. But this is not an indication of the air quality, it's purely of airflow into the ship. Another problem with these ships is modifications to compartments in lower deck areas mean that with carbon dioxide it's heavier than air and naturally migrates to the bottom of the ship where personnel mess spaces are located. Right, that's an overview of the, um, the main safety requirements. I'll now give you an overview or more detailed assessment of the ventilation system. This layout is similar on all UK naval platforms and has become a traditional legacy rather than developing with modifications and advances in technology. On HMS Bulwark, fresh air is supplied through 12 a AFUs and 31 AHUs. Fresh air is drawn through the AFU as shown and can either be directed through the radial filters there or through the bypass orifice and they're set at the same flow rate so that the remainder of the system doesn't require rebalancing by changing the bypass orifice. Fresh air is drawn through the AFU and it can either be directed through, um, sorry, the AHUs then condition the, the fresh air and the recirculated air. At, at 20% fresh air and 80% recirculated as previously mentioned. And the types of rooms this serves is galleys, mess areas, um, magazines and large medical spaces. Waste air is then expelled out of the ship and overboard and is discharged at a flow rate lower than the supply to ensure an overall positive pressure within the zones and the citadel where accommodation is. This ensures that in chemical conditions no hazardous uh, air can enter the ship. Just while we're on this slide, it's worth noting um, that from the AFU fan to the AHU, there's currently no um, method of balancing this line, and this is a point I'll get to later in the uh, presentation. The vent system is predominantly manually controlled, so it's very onerous on the ship staff and when the ship's alongside with the air systems test group to set the orifice plates and balance all the dampers, especially with the fiscal constraints and the crew reductions that we've had on the Navy. This means that, at times, this isn't carried out properly. So now to the assessment. We assessed the ship against the regulatory requirements for each stage, stage of distribution, from the whole ship down to the zone and then into each AHU and in the compartments within the technical paper. The assumptions were based around the worst case conditions for the ship, so a fully manned ship of 1,052. We also ignored permeation between the zones, so between bulkheads, uh, and we used the MOD standard at the whole ship level of the 13.7 litres per second per man, and at the zone level and AHU, we used the regulatory requirement of between 5 and 8 litres per second per man. We also assume that the flow rates are indicative of the oxygen and carbon dioxide levels within the ship. The outcome of the assessment was that the whole ship was accepted at build and is broadly acceptable now. Although we don't achieve the requirement of the 13.7 metres cubed per second, that is in worst case situations and it is higher than the regulatory requirement. So it seems all right on the surface. However, when you dig down into the 
the distribution of the system at the zone level and then further down at the AH level, we have found overall that there are discrepancies between what's being supplied to the crew for them to breathe and what the regulation stipulates is the required amount of fresh air. So solutions will now be presented to these defici deficiencies. These are solutions that we're currently implementing to improve these ships. Firstly is to monitor the air quality. Observe what the extent of the problem is, using air chemistry analy analyzers to monitor the CO2 and oxygen levels by uh, contracting um, independent assessors to come and make that assessment. If this confirms that there is a problem, we will then look to implement physical solutions to this ship. The first one is, the, is quite simple, is just to upgrade the airflow through the ship. This can then in, improve the circulation ratio, the recirc ratio from 80-20 to 70-30 say. Um, and that can be achieved by either opening up the bypass orifice called the iris of the ship or increasing the amount of AFUs on the ship. They're the larger banks, which is more difficult within the space constraints of these types of naval vessels. In conjunction with the higher makeup flow rates, you'd also need to increase the exhaust flow rates proportionally with the supply and improve the clear routes for CO2 removal from the lower de deck areas. The third improvement is system management. Currently, the airflow diagrams are as the ship was commissioned in 2004. These are now outdated and need to be updated to incorporate the modifications to the ship and the changing personnel arrangement. In terms of software, we've had some good presentation. There was a good presentation yesterday from Professor Halley who looked into CFD analysis and monitoring carbon dioxide and oxygen distribution within compartments. That will aid the, the better standard of the airflow diagrams and can then set the standard for maintenance of the ships going throughout the life, the remainder of the life. And the fourth point, and the most important point, is to automate the upgrade. Currently, these are manual systems but there's safety constraints on these um, and safety regulations we need to meet. So as I previously mentioned, there's no balancing valve set between the AFU and AHU lines. So if we were to put chemistry analyzers in there, they would send a signal if CO2 or oxygen levels became dangerous to a control unit. That could then be used to control actuated dampeners on that AHU to AFU line so that air can be directed to where the personnel levels are located in the ship. This reactive sim system or something similar could achieve the optimum distribution of available fresh air to areas where personnel are located. And this is a, a key fundamental in the ASHRAE handbook was where I got um, this solution from. So by following the available guidance, we'll be able to implement improvements on these ships. To summarize part one of the discussion, I've identified the discrepancies between the safety and the guidance calculated fresh air maker, and I've identified the solutions to this ship, or potential solutions to this ship. The key two being to increase airflow through the ship and to automate flow between the AFU and AHU. Thank you very much for your time, and I shall now pass you over to my friend Eunice Abbas, who will now present part two of the presentation.